Welcome to another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. I'm Professor Jim Powers. This video will demonstrate how to measure insertion loss on a single mode fiber optic link using a Zoom 2 optical power meter and a Laser OWL series single mode light source. There are four main steps in the process of measuring insertion loss of any fiber optic link. These steps are gathering link information and accessories, checking the equipment and accessories for proper operation, setting an optical reference, also called zeroing, and then taking insertion loss measurements. Before beginning any fiber test, the user must gather the necessary link information and accessories required to complete the test. Link information is used to help determine how much loss is acceptable for the fiber under test, otherwise known as a link budget. Optical loss measurements are compared to the link budget to determine if the fiber is good or not, which is the same as saying pass or fail. There are five key parameters that apply to any fiber optic test. First is the fiber type, which will be either single mode or multi-mode. In the case of multi-mode, this could be either 62.5 or 50 micron. Next is fiber length. It is important to know how much fiber is in the link under test in order to determine how much loss is acceptable for that particular length of fiber. Some OWL testers can be used to measure the end-to-end -end length of the fiber automatically, including the Fiber OWL 4 bolt optical power meter. Otherwise, the user can use jacket markings, installation documents, or other length measurement methods such as OTDR. For best results, avoid estimating the fiber length whenever possible. Third is number of connections. A connection is the point where two fiber connectors mate together, such as in a patch panel, wall plate, or mating sleeve. Fourth is the number of splices, which can be either fusion or mechanical. For the purpose of calculating a link budget, most cabling standards do not distinguish between fusion and mechanical splices. Lastly, the user must determine what wavelengths they will test at. For multi-mode, this is 850 and or 1300 nanometers and for single mode, this is 1310 and or 1550 nanometers. When using a micro owl or fiber owl optical power meter, these parameters can be entered directly into the device to calculate the link budget. However, if the link budget needs to be calculated manually, this is done simply by adding together the fiber loss, connection loss, and splice loss. Fiber loss is given in dB per kilometer and varies based on the fiber type and wavelength. To calculate fiber loss, multiply the fiber length in kilometers by the fiber loss. Connection loss is the number of connections multiplied by the dB loss per connection. Splice loss is the number of splices multiplied by the dB loss per splice. Most users will follow the fiber, connection, and splice loss specified in cabling standards, such as the TIA-568. It is also helpful to determine the connector type used in the link under test, which will help determine the right reference cable configuration to use. For accessories, it is highly recommended to keep at least three patch cables on hand, since there are three reference methods, one jumper, two jumper, and three jumper. Mating sleeves may also be required for some link configurations. Refer to OWL's video on reference methods for more information. Finally, if testing multi-mode fiber, the launch cable attached to the light source will also need to be wrapped around a mandrel according to cabling standards specifications. Refer to OWL's video on mandrels for more information. Okay, now that we've gathered our equipment and accessories, we can uh, actually check the equipment and accessories to make sure that they are working properly before we start our insertion loss test. Now, in this case, we are using a Zoom 2 optical power meter and a laser owl single mode light source. So, which that means we're testing a single mode fiber today. Now, uh, just one, uh, one piece of information here. The laser owl could come in several different uh, wavelength configurations. Uh, in this case, we have 1310 and 1550 nanometers installed. However, the laser owl could have only 1310 or only 1550 as well. So you need to make sure that you have the right wavelengths um, for the, for the uh, particular fiber that you want to test. You can locate the, uh, the wavelength information on the back of the unit on the serial number sticker. So, now the first thing uh, we want to do uh, for checking our equipment is to connect in our tester. Okay, uh, 
as you can see, we actually need three cables here. We have, I'll at least show here, two here, but we'll actually need three. Here I've got a, a third patch cable. Now the reason we need three patch cables is one for the, the zoom uh, when, it's, when we're taking an insertion loss measurement, and then we'll need a patch cable for each of the wavelengths here. Now uh, we can't use one cable and switch it back and forth. Reason being is that once you've, once you've set a reference with a cable attached to this port, you cannot disconnect this, this port. Otherwise, you'll have to re-zero and start your measurements all over. So instead of, instead of uh, switching, testing one wavelength at a time, we simply connect two cables uh, for the, the wavelengths we're testing. Now, the first thing we want to do uh, for testing our cables is to connect our the cable that we're going to be using for the the power meter side of the test connected into the 1310 nanometer port here okay then power on the units and as you can see the 1310 nanometer wavelength is lit by default here but you can see that the zoom says 13 or 850 nanometers we need to set this to 1310 so we're pressing the wavelength button until we see 1310 Okay, now our target value is roughly minus 10 dBm. Okay, this is the, where we calibrate our laser all single mode light sources. You can see that this is a little bit higher than that, or I'm sorry, a little bit lower, minus 10.4, minus 10.3. Uh, this, this patch cable is okay to use. It's, it's not quite minus 10, but it's okay. It's good enough to use. Really what we're concerned with is that it does not exceed minus 11 dBm. Once it does that, we want to consider replacing the patch cable. So, once we've determined this cable is good, we simply disconnect it from both, uh, both testers, and then we set it aside. We will not need this cable again until we start performing our insertion loss measurement. So, I'll just push it off to the side there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of these cables and connect it into one of the, one of the ports here. So, 13, 10 nanometers first. And as long as we're, we have this uh, cable connected, let's, uh, let's check it out first. Okay, again, we have a minus 10.6 or so. Not quite minus 10, but it's, it's okay uh, because we're not exceeding minus 11 dBm. In fact, in a reference cable, uh, any imperfections in the cable are going to be zeroed out anyway. So, uh, now that we've determined this cable is good, we can zero out uh, the, these testers with this wavelength. This is simply done by pressing and holding this units zero button. Okay. You can see that we're switching to DB mode. DB is what we're measuring or how we measure loss. Okay, uh, now that we've set a reference for 1310, what we want to do next is check our cable at 1550 nanometers and set a reference for that wavelength as well. So we disconnect our 1310 reference cable. We connect in our 1550 reference cable. And you will see that we have a reading that says low. Uh, now this is, this is okay. This is actually what's supposed to happen at this point. We haven't yet uh, powered on the 1550 nanometer wavelength yet, but this is the cable that we have attached. So. In order to actually get a reading now, you simply press the wavelength button on the light source to switch over to the 1550. Now, to check the cable at 1550, we also need to be in DBM mode and also have the power meter set to 1550. So, first of all, press the wavelength button here until it says 1550. And then we also press the unit zero button until we read DBM. Okay, again, we see 10.66. This is okay. We haven't gotten to minus 11 yet. So this patch cable is good to use. We'll simply press and hold the zero button to zero out at 1550 as well. Once we've zeroed out both, uh, both wavelengths, it's time to take the units to opposite ends of the length and uh, take our insertion loss measurement. Now that we've zeroed out our testers, uh, it's time to take them both to opposite ends of the link and connect them in to take our insertion loss measurement. So uh, we can take the patch cable out of the power meter. It's okay to do so. Um, you just have to remember that we're not disconnecting the, the ports here on the light source. 
So we take the light source to one side, power meter to another side. And what I've done here is I, I'm using this, this little box here. It's, it says simulated fiber link. Uh, I'm uh, pretending that we have two different closets here. We have a, we have a closet with si at side B with a six port patch panel and a six port patch panel in another closet. We'll call that side A. So first thing we need to do is connect our testers in to the link that we're going to be testing that day. So we take the, the patch cable we set aside earlier and we plug it into the zoom and then again at the uh, into the uh, first port on that on the power meter side of the test here. Now, uh, just to keep things organized, let, let's test at 1310 nanometers first. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch to 1310 nanometers by pressing the wavelength button until we read 1310. Okay, same thing on the on the light source here. Okay, then we take the 1310 nanometer reference cable and we plug it into port one. Okay, now once we connect in, you can see that we have an insertion loss measurement. In this case, it's around 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, somewhere in that range. Um, now, whether or not this is good uh, depends on what we what we calculate our link budget to be. For example, let's say our link budget is 2.5 dB. In this case, 2.5 dB is not being exceeded, so uh, this link would be said to pass. Uh, what we're looking for here is a negative sign. That, that means loss. And then we're looking at this number here to not exceed our link budget, in this case, 2.5. So, once we've uh, determined that this cable is good, we can connect into the next uh, next fiber to test. Now, a helpful tip regarding the the zoom and the in the laser all here: uh, it's far easier to store all the readings at one. I'm, I'm sorry, to test all the uh, fibers at one wavelength first, and then move to the second wavelength. That way, it, it's 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 a tremendous time saver, and it's less confusing. You don't have to keep switching patch cables back and forth. Um, so once we've uh, determined that the, the first reading is okay, now we go on and we test the rest of the fibers. And finally, we, we take our measurement for fiber number six. As you can see, all of our readings were within our 2.5 dB link budget. So this means this link is, is installed correctly. Now, if you do want to make a report for this, you, you can simply write your loss values on a piece of paper for each of the fibers that you're testing. So now that we've tested at 1310 nanometers, we want to switch over to 1550. First thing, take your power meter cable, plug back into port number one. Press the wavelength button until you're reading 1550. Then we disconnect the 1310 reference cable. And we won't be using that cable, so we can kind of just set it off aside a little bit. And then we take our 1550 reference cable and plug it into port number one. Now, as you can see, we say low. This is not a problem because, remember, we haven't switched the, the light source over to to uh, 1550 yet. So let's do that at this time. Okay, now as you can see, we do have a reading here. In this case, uh, 0 0.26 dB. We're still within our 2.5 dB link budget, so, so this is a good reading. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the remaining fibers. And finally, we test the uh, test fiber port number six. As you can see, all of these readings um, did not exceed two and a half dB of loss. So we can say that this link is is also uh, working for 15, 50 nanometers. Once we've tested all our fibers, we can simply disconnect all the cables from the link. And if we need to, we can uh, 
write down all our results and produce a little report. Uh, but we can be assured that this, this link has been, been tested correctly for insertion loss. This has been another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. For more information about additional instructional videos or OWL fiber optic test equipment in general, please visit OWL's website at owl-inc.com. I'm Professor Jim Powers. Thanks for watching.